DHS survey process has four stages. Stage 1, survey design and preparation, includes designing the sample and questionnaires and takes about six months. Stage 2 focuses on training interviewers and other key staff on their roles and collecting the data. This stage lasts six months or more. Stage 3, data editing, data tabulation, and report writing begins with data editing while Stage 2 is still in process and may continue for up to a year. Stage 4 focuses on dissemination of the data and reports, data use and analysis, and lasts for six to seven months. The full DHS survey process in a country can take up to two and a half years. During the design stage, the U.S. aid mission, a national government, or another donor invites the DHS program staff to visit the country. The DHS Senior Survey Coordinator works with national government representatives and survey donors to assess local data needs, raise funds, and plan for the survey. They make decisions about the survey scope, including sample size, topic-specific modules, and biomarkers to include in the survey. The DHS Senior Survey Coordinator also works with the local implementing agency, typically the National Statistical Office, to develop the budget for the survey. They select a local lab, often the National Reference Laboratory, based on its capacity and areas of expertise, to conduct lab-based testing of blood or other specimen types to be collected in the survey. Next, a DHS program sampling statistician works with the implementing agency to design a sample that represents the population at the national level, urban and rural areas, and the first subnational administrative unit of the country, often a state or province. The standard DHS survey uses five questionnaires, the household questionnaire, the woman's questionnaire, the man's questionnaire, the biomarker questionnaire, and a fifth questionnaire, the field worker questionnaire, which collects information about the field workers themselves. The team adapts the DHS core questionnaires to the needs of the country based on the priorities of the government ministries, country programs, NGOs, and funding agencies. Questionnaires are translated into local languages. The team then pretests the survey instruments, which involves training a small group of field workers and then testing the questionnaires in up to several hundred households. Based on the pretest, they make modifications to the survey and training materials. Stage 2 begins with household mapping and listing. Listers go to each cluster and make a detailed map and numerical list of all the structures in the cluster and within occupied structures, a list of all households. Geographical coordinates are also collected. From this listing, the DHS program team then randomly selects households to participate in the survey. The DHS program team trains between 100 to 400 field workers as interviewers, team supervisors, and biomarker technicians. They receive training on topics ranging from building rapport with respondents, questionnaire content, computerized data collection, and reading maps to identify selected households. Biomarker technicians receive training in anthropometry, hemoglobin measurement, and other biomarkers and on completing the biomarker questionnaire, informed consent, and returning test results. The trainings culminate in several days of field practice during which teams try out all aspects of field work prior to the launch of the survey. Trainers evaluate the trainees and top performers become the field staff for the DHS survey. When the survey launches, teams of field workers travel across the country to begin data collection. Depending on the composition of the household, an interviewer can spend a half a day or more in a single household. The woman's questionnaire alone takes 45 minutes on average. In some households, more than one woman is eligible for interview. Interviewers ask respondents questions and enter their responses into tablet computers. Data are transferred from the interviewer's tablet to the supervisor's tablet for review and then to the central office. With data collection underway, the DHS survey moves into Stage 3, which begins with the process of editing the data. Once data collection is completed, data are finalized, the wealth index is prepared, and data are recoded. Next, the first stages of data tabulation begin. The DHS program and the implementing agency produce the Key Indicators Report, or KIR, containing essential demographic and health indicators. 
The KIR is released quickly so that key information is rapidly available to inform decisions. In the meantime, the data processing team tabulates and checks more than 200 standard DHS tables and many survey-specific tables for the final report. Once the tables are complete, authors from the implementing agency, Ministry of Health, and DHS program staff meet for a two-week report writing workshop. Report drafts go back to the DHS program headquarters for technical review, editing, and formatting. The DHS program team also creates dissemination materials including summary reports, fact sheets, videos, infographics, and social media toolkits to communicate the data to different audiences in the country and globally. During the fourth and final stage of the process, the host country government and implementing agency share the survey results during a public event in which government representatives and other key stakeholders officially release the results and make final reports and data sets publicly available. Formal data use activities now begin. The DHS program works with the implementing agency to plan subnational dissemination events and co-facilitate topical data use workshops for stakeholders and special workshops for journalists to teach them how to access and use DHS data in their work.